What are you going to do now? Are you going to take this back? Mm -hmm. Are you going to relitigate? Uh, what is your game plan in sort of going after YouTube here? Well, we are going to litigate. We sort of were prevented from litigating originally because they just ruled uh, Section 230 kind of obscure, obscures it. We couldn't take depositions. We couldn't find out inside what sort of algorithms Google had to, um, to do the verification marks and such not and to send it to certain parties. What are their algorithms, you know, AI algorithmic intelligence? So we'll go back and, yeah, we're going to um, take this one as far as we can. So you mentioned Section 230. That, of course, protects Internet companies from liability for third-party speech. What's your view on this federal law, and has it changed as a result of the action that you've experienced? My view is that Section 230 is about, um, you know, freedom of opinions and expressing them. And, um, you know, you can even say bad things about other people, and you have a right to freedom of speech. We're talking now about a situation where there's crime going on. Are you going to be a good citizen and take the steps to even answer a phone call, to even get a person involved, to look at it, to shut it down with a little bit of software? Um, we're looking at that, that aspect. When there's a crime going on, you kind of have a duty as a citizen to stop it, get in there, you know, help the police get in on it. It's an obvious crime. I mean, so many people lost money, they, they actually wrote yeah. me. But Steve, blaming me for them losing their life, their life savings. I mean, that's terrible, and we obviously don't like that. But there's a difference between sort of proving that the scam was a scam and holding them accountable versus holding YouTube accountable for their uh, for their uh, blue check marks and their verification badges. Sure. Uh, can, can you stay on the line after this call and um, and uh, send me one Bitcoin and I'll send you two back? Uh, no. <laughs> but thanks for asking. I mean, I mean, you know what? You know what? You don't. You don't even have to be. You don't have to see the stuff. You could. Uh, Stevie Wonder could tell it's a scam. It's crime. It's a crime. Right. No, I'm not saying the and scam isn't a crime. And they did to me, Steve, but to others. Uh, I'm not saying the scam isn't a crime. The scam is a scam. I'm saying why is YouTube responsible for that? Well, YouTube actually um, verified these. Um, um, I don't know, parties or whatever, and then sent it to select people that were already interested perhaps in uh, cryptocurrency. They, they, have, they have a definition somewhere. We, we couldn't do discovery yet. Now we can. And um, how did they choose to, they were speaking for themselves. Mm -hmm. That's them as a speaker. It's not a third party that's doing the speech. That's Google doing it. Wait, 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 wait. Hold, hold on a second, Steve. But Google, but Google and YouTube didn't make the scam. Like they didn't take your image and make a commercial. I just want to be really clear about that. Correct, but they had some speech in it that convinced people it was legitimate. But what about Twitter or X's case, where they have a blue check mark, but as it's been made really clear, once upon a time it verified something, but these days it's just what you get when you pay an extra fee. Um, Twitter's or X is not saying it's anything more than that. Yep, yeah, but it gives people an idea that this is legitimate when it's not. So, you know, we'll see how it goes.